Hello and welcome to my retro watches. My name is Mike and this video is all about the watch you can see in front of you. Only you're seeing double because we've got two of the same watch. How about that then? So these are uh, Avia watches, uh, 17 jewels. Uh, I'm not too sure what sort of date they're from, but what a lovely, lovely design. Uh, I forget this, what they call it. Is it Baroque or something? Um, Let's take the focal lock off. So as you can see, it's all you can see is the dial. Very minimalist on the case. Uh, classical look. I really love uh, the sort of old vintage watches that have got that sub dial as well for the seconds. So, and there's the other one as well. Absolutely identical. Now I bought them separately. I bought this one. I think they both cost me around about 30, 40 pounds. Uh, both seem to be, well, this one was non running. This one kind of runs. And uh, I bought this one initially for myself. And uh, then when another one came up, I thought, ah, there's a great idea. Let's do a double video. And then perhaps if I can get them both running at the end of the video, maybe there's a surprise in store. Who knows? You'll have to stay tuned and watch until the end. So in the usual my retro watches style, everything is going to be completely off the cuff. I haven't done any um, preparation for this at all. Um, all I'm going to try and do is uh, take both watches apart, clean them, see if there's anything obvious for a start that may be preventing them from running. Uh, and hopefully we can just get them back up and running as good as we can. Clean up the uh, case because both cases are pretty dirty. The gold is gold is definitely a gold plated watch. And it's a bit tarnished. This particular one here as well is missing the crown. But fortunately for me, it's still got the stem. And I've had a close look at there as well. And the stem has got a lot of thread. Whereas this one has actually got the crown. But again, the crown is quite tarnished. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the uh, This as well, actually, the crystal, I can polish this one up. But this one... Uh, it's got a lot of scratches at the bottom, but unfortunately, I don't know if that's coming through on camera or not, there's a crack in it there. So I'm going to have to try to source. It's an acrylic one, so it'd be easy enough to find, I think, but just trying to get the right sort of shape. It's kind of a... I can't decide whether it's a flat or whether it's slightly domed, actually. It's hard to say at this point. But what elegant class watches they really are. Now, they're quite small, but then I guess you would expect that for this time. You know, it's got to be 60s or even, well, I would say it's 60s, I think. So there we go. So it's 33 mil. And we have a lug size of, I can't use my calipers today. So we have a really unusual lug size. I might get a bad reflection now as well. 17 mil. What on earth is that? 17 mil. That's going to be interesting to find some straps for them. So what we'll do now, we'll pop the backs off and have a closer look inside. Also a couple of little other changes. I've got a blue mat instead of a green one. I'm just trying out something new. Uh, again, I posted this in the Facebook group recently. Something I bought on AliExpress and I just thought I'd make a change. And I've also got lots of black finger cuts. Uh, I bought a, what was on offer at Cousins at the time. Didn't realize it was gonna turn up to be a bag of 650 finger cuts. So I'm going to be using them a lot more than I normally do, even for the disassembly. Um, I've got pretty grim looking fingers as well. So it just masks a bit of uh, how bad my fingers look. Um, so anyway, we need to take the backs off. And I just wanted to show you something quickly on this one. You can sort of see there that it's kind of like polished and it's got all these sort of weird stripey marks on it compared to this one that hasn't. And all that is caused by it's something like a NATO strap. So it's been running through here and for many, many, many years it's been rubbing away on the uh, the fiber and it's had that effect on the metal. So we're gonna have to deal with that as long as we can get this watch running. And of course, we're gonna have to polish these all up as well because they're quite tarnished. Um, they're also front loaders and that means that the watch is gonna come out 
from the front. It's all dial, as it's pretty obvious, it's all dial, and that dial will be sitting on a part of the case in there, and we'll be able to remove the case back, and then remove this a little slot here, be able to get the uh, the bezel, if you're going to call it the bezel, it'll be part of the crystal, I would think, will pop off, and the movement will quite easily fall out at that point. So to remove that as well, I'm going to use my new purpose-made uh, case knife. So a guy called Adam Day, he was a, a subscriber to the channel and a guy on the Facebook noticed that I was struggling with my Bersion um, knife because I'm left-handed and I can only buy a Bersion right-handed knife. Uh, so he kindly, he's a blacksmith of sorts, he kindly made me this knife, what a really kind gesture and really nice too. So I'm going to use it. Okay, now we see the first movement, and it's lovely, it's a nice gold looking movement there. Now actually I haven't opened these, uh, this is the first time I've opened them, they've just been sitting in my drawer. Oh, oh. okay, well that's thrown me. We've got two absolutely completely different movements. For a minute, I just thought maybe one was um, steel and the other one plated like that. But no, they are completely different. I mean, look at it. All the bridge setup's different. Uh, the uh, the crown wheel's different on that one. The balance here is bigger than that. So this is going to make this a hell of a lot more interesting. How am I going to film this? I don't really want to film two completely separate watch um, strip downs, but maybe I'm going to have to. Maybe I'm going to have to do some uh, some fast forwarding. Who knows? Um, so, okay, let's pick this one to work on most because I like everything is glitters to me is gold, and uh, I do like that sort of movement. And then perhaps we'll do a bit more. Well, I'm going to try and flip through the two, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> As I say, it's off the cuff, and I'm just talking here. I don't know what I'm going to do, <laughs> but stay tuned to find out. Okay, so there we have two dials, and uh, it's a shame, really. This one is a lot nicer. Uh, it's got a sort of starburst effect. Again, might not be coming through on, on camera. The dial is in overall good condition. And this one is a bit more flat and matte, and it's uh, got some sort of corrosion down here. Corrosion is probably not the right, right word, but I guess some sort of moisture's got in there at some point. Um, so that is a bit of a shame. I was hoping they were going to be exactly the same, um, especially for the plans I've got at the end. But there we go. So I'm going to remove the hands. And as I say, I'm going to start stripping down this one and we'll concentrate on that one for the video for the time being. So to get the movement out, I've just rested it back on its crystal actually, just underneath. Got two screws here, movement screws, and then we'll also have to take the stem out. Now I'm also not going to put any wind in. I can put wind in and it does run this watch. Um, I've not watched to see if it keeps any good time. Uh, but if I wind it up now, it just means I've got to try and take all the power back out of it. So just to try and speed things up just a little bit. And these case screws seem very loose. So now they're out of the way. I'm thinking this is the crown or the stem release screw.
which of course it is and the stem again let's just see if it wants to focus now it's just full of completely full of fluff it's probably off the uh, the nato strap that was once on this watch there we go it was resting on there so that can be cleaned now we can flip it over and remove the dial there's going to be two screws somewhere yeah there's one there so i'll just again i've got to keep taking the lock on and off on my camera but there is a screw hole there okay so the dial is off the crown wheel fell out along with a bit of rubbish and this is the back of the dial again i'm not sure if you can see that stonking great big fingerprint there so whoever's worked on this watch at some point was not wearing finger cots. That's not nice to see, because that probably is there for good. Yes, the roddy coat is not moving it at all. So that will be part of the watch from now on. So a little bit less than professional um, uh, approach there. Uh, put the dial away somewhere safe. And this uh, this side of the movement looks quite nice, actually. A little bit separate, uh, different to what I'm usually seeing, but it's all the same sort of principle. So we'll get this into a movement holder and start the disassembly. Okay, so here we go with the dial side. And we've got the hour wheel. And we have this quite interesting Uh, set in lever spring this is very elaborate okay and then we have the yoke spring which looks like it's a real horrible scary one so it's got a a real curve to it that one and I'm not quite sure what the best approach is there we go we got it I'll take the yoke the minute wheel clutch and the pinion there and then that spring look at that I don't think I've ever seen one that quite sh that shape before yeah that can catch you out uh, so that's the dial side done other than the um, cannon pinion there On cannon pinion, so the uh, setting lever here is on on a screw on the other side. But there, it's nice, nice side of that movement. Still don't know what the movement is yet. We'll find that out when we remove the balance. But for now, I'll just turn this over. Okay, now we're on the interesting side, and uh, I'm using my favourite movement holder again. It only holds these very small ones. I think it does something like 25 millimeters. Um, so it doesn't fit a lot of my Seiko ones that I like to work on. But it just holds it really, really nice and tight. And that's what I enjoy. Everybody uses these, the Persians 4040s. And I use this quite a lot. But it's certainly not my favourite. It sometimes doesn't bite the, uh, the movement as well as I'd like. So sometimes you go to remove a screw and the whole thing falls down and moves around. Real horrible thing. So anyway, uh, I digress. Let's get the balance off. It's the most critical part, really. It's easily damaged. Very difficult to repair. Uh, certainly if you are a beginner. So it's best to try to move that. A lot of these movements, this one included. Let me just put the 
focus back on. And if you can see that, there's a little slot. And there's a lot of these on Swiss movements, it seems, where you can just get your screwdriver in enough to lever like so. Helps to get the parts off. There we go. So I'll just put the balance away safe. And now we can have a quick look at what we're looking at. So it says there, S, oops, I'm not in focus. I do apologize. Come on camera. I'm hoping that's picking it up. SGT. I have no idea what that is at all. I've never heard of it in my life. So um, <laughs> I'm going to have to do some Googling, but right, not right now, because first of all, I'm going to take it apart um, and then we'll figure out a little bit more about that movement. That's interesting. Definitely never seen that mark before. So I'll start with the pallets. Now, again, we know that the watch is uh, wound down. That's a really interesting pallet cock. It's, oops. I was going to say it's really, really thin. Look at that. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen one as thin as that before. That's, uh, that's interesting. Okay. So there is a tiny little bit of residual power, but I won't be too worried about that. So we can get the train bridge off and we need to take all of the uh, uh, winding mechanism. So the screw here is always a left hand uh, thread. So you've got to be careful with those because it's quite easy to tighten. And uh, when you're thinking you're loosening and then the screw shears, and then you've got a major problem on your hands. I've done that a few times and it's gut wrenching when it happens. Okay, and I've just got to be a little bit careful now. Take the ratchet wheel off and there should be a spring under here. There we are, there's the ratchet spring. Interesting setup on this one. Again, a very thin part. So far though, nothing that is scary. I do love these sort of watches. They've got no day date complications. They're just hand winding. And if you're starting out, uh, this sort of, you know, era of watch is a really good place to start. You know, it's a fairly decent quality in the sense it's got large jewels, so it's well made. It means it will go back well easily or easier together. And you don't have so much complications to be worried about as your, you know, your first sort of watches. So there we are, that bridge is off. Now we can just take the train bridge off. There we are, there's the train of wheels. All pretty straightforward. So we'll just carefully remove all of those. Don't want to damage any of the pivots. 
There we are, and lastly, the barrel. There we have the complete strip down of this mystery SGT movement. <laughs> so that one will go into the cleaner. I will inspect the mainspring, of course, and uh, I'm going to leave the set and lever on for the time being. It's still quite loose. I tend to find these things real blooming fiddly to try and get back on. And uh, if you just do them loose enough, I think, well, I've cleaned it, it dries out, it, everything's okay. So, I'll put this parts away on this one, and start on the second one. Okay, here we are with movement number two, and apart from the uh, shock jewel assembly here, it looks pretty much identical. So that's interesting. So I guess one of these may be uh, a, a later or an earlier model. I uh, will guess we'll find out as we strip it down and see what's different. The whole of this main plate actually looks just a little bit different, but let's crack on. Now this one certainly had some water ingress or something's happened to it. Uh, the parts don't look as nice as they do on the other one, sadly. And the screw's in a different position on this one. Ah, it's not, uh, not tight in the holder. And what I have noticed through the hole here is the balance is moving. Again, this part is it's in tight and they can be quite fragile these things which is always my worry I never want to break a setting lever spring and of course a bit off camera, I do apologise, and I've just noticed there's another screw in here. There's a, a rookie mistake. Just need a right size screwdriver to get it out. Could have ended up bending apart or snapping this set in lever spring. That said, it's still. There we go, it's coming off now. So the spring is different. There we are, that's a different spring completely. But the yoke looks pretty much the same. Whoops. And then the crown wheel and the clutch, that's going to need a really good clean. Minute wheel, pinion, if in doubt, get it with Rodico, and lastly, cannon pinion. Right, here we go then. So we'll have the same procedure, and we'll see what might be different. And now we have again, is my camera focusing? No, it's not. So we have a P three twenty. Uh, I, again, I don't know that one either, but it is remarkably similar. Okay, the bridge setup is different, but um, okay, well, um, both of these will have to be researched, and in part two of the video, I might be able to tell you a little bit more about them. 
the wonders of Google. Uh, so I'm just a little bit uh, apprehensive as to whether there's any power left in this mainspring. And I guess you can't see that because my fingers, but there was no, there's no power in there of, of any consequence. So we can repeat what we did with the other one. As long as I can find the right size screwdrivers. And this has the same really thin pallet cock, which is isn't nice really. It's stuck down. The last thing you want to do is break a pivot of the uh, pallet fork. So looking at it, this one is probably a little bit better. You know, you've got these different jewels here for the escape and two little screws here, which is more what I'm used to seeing for the crown wheel. A more conventional, oops, I've just bashed the camera, sorry. More conventional um, click setup. Tiny, tiny screws for the click. And maybe a bit of magnetism. And there's that spring out. Not sure what you saw there. Maybe lots of my fingers. As always, I find out in edit when it's usually too late. I'm getting slipped there as well. Always try to use the right size screwdriver for the screw that you're removing. Or well, you do have slips, and slips cause scratches. And we've got another one there, haven't we? So three screws for this bridge. Very stiff indeed, that one. It's interested it's just got a little sort of cut out on the corner there enough for you to just leave a well thought of and we got a wheel it's coming out So two of those wheels are particularly stiff. Could be an indication as to why it may not have been working. And there we go. That's that one disassembled as well. And uh, definitely a different movement. Obviously a different movement maker. Similar on one side. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but this side has been a lot different in some respects. So it's time to chuck it all in the cleaner. Uh, we'll do a little cleaning montage, why not? If you're getting bored of the cleaning montages, please, please let me know, because uh, I won't film them anymore. <laughs> See you on the other side, hopefully with some information about these movements.
Welcome back guys. I hope you enjoyed the cleaning montage there. You're probably wondering what I'm doing back in front of the camera, but I have to say I've actually already edited the first half of this video and we're at over 30 minutes already. And to actually film what I want to film, which is basically build this, the movements side by side together, uh, I think that's going to take a little bit more than just half an hour. And as my videos tend to be an hour, I'd like to cut this one a bit short, end this one here at part one, start in part two, and then we can get really down to detail with the, the rebuild of the two movements. Perhaps I might know a little bit more about them at that stage because I still haven't researched them. I'd also like to perhaps do a little bit of case polishing. Now it is uh, gold plated, so there's not much I can do, but we can see if we can bring it back a little bit. And then obviously I did say at the end of this video that I'd announce something, so I may as well announce it now. And that is, after I've built these two watches, as long as they both run reasonably well, I would like to give one away to one of you guys. So the channel's gone over 25,000 subscribers and the last giveaway I did was actually at 5,000 subscribers. So, you know, never mind. I've let it slip a little bit, but I'd like to give something a little back. And I thought that one of these watches might be appropriate. So for the lucky winner, of course, you would get to see your watch being rebuilt in every minute detail, which would be nice. And again, it's just something to say thank you for all your support over the years that you've given me so far to grow this channel to where it is today. So with that in mind, like I say, we'll end this video here. Now, if you are watching this as it's gone out, the uh, episode two, if you like, will be hopefully in around about a week. I'm hoping to film this, this over the next few days. And then it does take a little bit of time to edit these things, uh, certainly with my life as hectic as it can be at times. So, uh, but of course, if you're watching months ahead, there will be a link at the end of the video to then take you to episode number two. So as always at the end, I would like to say, uh, please like the video, please leave your comments below. I'll try and read every single one of them and I've tried to answer as many as I possibly can. Definitely hit that bell button if you're gonna to subscribe to the channel because that way you'll be notified when I put new videos up. And of course, visit the Facebook group, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. You'll find me in there, I'm in there every day. And there's 9,000 of us in there now, and we're all talking watches and showing each other's collections off, and of course, repair work as well. So great place to go and hang out, and hopefully I'll see you in there too. But if I don't see you in there, I'll see you in the next video. So take care, and hopefully see you in about a week. Bye for now.